So we just finished working pretty exclusively in and around uh, the upper portion of gallbladder meridian, pec major, pec minor, teres, rhomboids, stretching. Now we're going to continue following the gallbladder as it comes into the torso through the hips, iliotibial band and out. It's another way of working gallbladder. But we're going to initiate by just creating some space here in between the ribs. So this is like the Makaho stretch where you get all that spatial consideration in between the ribs. Okay. So my knee here is hooked just below the iliac crest, right in the softness here. Hooks right there. So you get some nice stretch here. And it's a nice sustained stretch so you can keep a certain uprightness in your torso so you're not straining at all. And some compression. So ribs go this way, hand position goes this way. So it can take that full compression. Then when you get close to the floating ribs, easier. But now you have all this uh, soft tissue between the floating rib and the top of the iliac crest. So we're gonna approach it a few ways to loosen it and then go in a little bit more specifically. So one of the ways we loosen it is called dragon's mouth where we use our hands overlaid like this. Okay. Inhale, please. And exhale, just sink right in. Soft tissue. <laughs> Boink, eyes popped open. <laughs> so this is the contour that goes in between uh, the rib and the iliac crest. And because of uh, how the muscular attachment here can close this uh, from the obliques or from um, the QL, you want to spend a, a few minutes here with digital thumb compression compressing right into the top oh. of the iliac crest because it's sort of nasty here yeah. because it's a binding point right where there's rotation and flexion and extension so you want to spend a little time here and you want to position yourself so that you can accommodate your body weight a little bit more so your arms are relatively extended and you're just going to lean in can you get the jewelry on my wrist? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You can put that on your website later. Please. Etsy. Etsy. <laughs> 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 I don't get it. <laughs> okay. And then we're just going to come here and now use our thumbs. So we're just going from general to specific. First this, then this, and now thumbs right into the lateral border of the musculature. Because gravity has cr created a little separation here, so we can just be easily now. We need compassion. Sticking mm -hmm. thumbs into a lateral border of QL and long distance. And with the arm up like this, if they can tolerate it, what does it do? It creates more space here. Right? It lifts the rib cage up so that you have more room here. You're pressing through latissimus dorsi. Yeah. Through all of the transverse. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm just thinking about the different muscles that are there. Mm -hmm. My goal here, I'm going into the lateral border of QL and longissimus. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just taking my thumbs this way and just working this lower muscle here a little bit. Come around for a second, sleepy people. Come, come. So look, spine. Excuse me, why just do this? Spine. So you want this is lever move. So you sink in, and then the elbow goes right mm -hmm. <laughs> into the Q L. <clears throat> that can impinge the uh, brachial plexus here a little bit, the nerve bundle here, so you don't want to keep that arm up too much. So now we're going to take this into the sacrum and the hip. So 
to get a take good advantage of compressing the hip and sideline uh, one of the ways to do it is to take this knee and stabilize and bring this leg over so it locks it in position without this leg if you're compressing it might start to slide away which is okay uh, but the purpose here is to keep it more upright so it can take this pressure so you feel for the greater trochanter of the femur and the lateral border of the sacrum just like before just to be familiar with the bony landmarks and now that leaves you with a crescent moon shape of a soft tissue and so this is what we're paying attention to so one of the ways I do it is I put my fingers on the greater trochanter and I use this portion of my hand to compress so I feel for ASIS and I come just behind that and I just compress down. So my fingers are on the a greater trochanter, so I just use that as a center point and I just add compression all the way around. <coughs> and I'm right over the work so I can really take advantage of my um <laughs> of my uh, position here my body weight and then if you are built close to the ground like I am you can use your forearm here and come in she's pretending she's smiling <laughs> it's very direct and it takes pressure really loving but it gets it's pretty congested here on her so for me it's a little less pressure but it will stay there a little longer Working, working, working. Here's greater trochanter. And so, remember, the gallbladder comes like this through the um, piriformis. That's the center point. That's gallbladder point right in the belly of piriformis. And then it comes here. So, you can just do some compression first. <coughs> and usually, uh, uh, iliotibial band in this section of the gallbladder is tight somewhere in the midpoint and then usually at the attachment. So pay attention to your pressure when you hit those points. And here it is right here for her. Here's a greater trochanter, here's the attachment. Usually pretty much halfway there's a gets a lot of tension so is that a, which um is that a point that we should know a specific like acupuncture? Uh acupuncture yes point? here so let your hand hang down by your side and where your middle finger goes pretty much right into it. There's usually a tight spot right there. I can't remember the number. It might be unlisted. And then thumb over thumb, digital compression into gallbladder. So this is a little bit more specific now. So we're working from general to specific. <clears throat> but I wanna call your attention to your hands, how you use your hands. The more relaxed you can keep them, the less tension will build up here. So you want to keep your hands open, but just use a brace thumb and just lean in through your thumbs. Okay? That gives you plenty of pressure, but it doesn't put a lot of tension in your hand. And if your hands are relaxed, then you have a tendency more to be clearer in the contact. You feel more, and it's a more direct uh, contact to the subo. You just take that down the attachment at the side of the knee. And the meridian, like we learned um, before, comes through the peroneals, right? So you could either extend like this. I have a tendency to use my foot, since my foot is right there. So I just mash down on it. Nice sustained pressure. This accentuates the pressure through uh, your leg. Working the muscles and the gallbladder. Easy. Working. You can come and do the uh, source point again in the front and at the bottom of the meliolus. Digital 
Yeah, that's pretty sticky too. And then right out the fourth toe. And then, if that wasn't enough, we're going to continue uh, with the straight leg. So this is all one part of the routine, this lower portion of side leg. We're just going to start again with some nice compression. And this, well, since we're doing the inner leg, we're just doing spleen, liver, and kidney again. Just to do some nice general compression because they are always pretty uh, depleted. So we're just trying to keep some nice movement open. So when you get above the knee, you want to have easy pressure right above the knee where it attaches because it's usually a little sensitive there. But you can apply a little bit more pressure as you get into the belly here of the adductors, but also those three meridians, spleen, liver, and kidney. And how you choose to do it, you know, you can do palm, you can do knee. and any other part of your body that gives sustained pressure. <laughs> uh, it's interesting, you know, in Thai massage they do this called blood stop. Even though it doesn't stop the blood, but it slows it down so there's a slight buildup. So when you release it, the theory is that it opens up the channel. So there's a little back pressure and then it cleans out the channel. Mm. <laughs> so you sit, and the more you come over your center, just feel a little bit more pressure. Okay. So this is the adjustment. Like if it's, you, you stay like this, it's nice. If you come like this, it's a little bit more direct. Right? Mm -hmm. And you just want to try to hang out there and you'll feel pulse. And then you come off feel pretty good about yourself and then we're going to end with this stretch. Um, so uh, this stretch is this way. So we're going to take the leg and bring it back. And I'm going to sit above their hip and I'm going to place the side of my knee in her lower back. And now this is nice psoas stretch and then I'm going to address the yon meridians of the leg. You go like this. Relax mm -hmm. your leg. Okay. Mm -hmm. Want a little bit more? Are you okay? Just a bit more. Okay, so just do an inhale. And exhale. Oh god. Okay. Sweet lower. And then this. Because what's tight here that uh, is the stomach coming just below the ASIS like we did before. The gallbladder right through the iliotibial band. and the bladder meridian in the hamstring. So let's take an inhale again quick and exhale. So now that's, that's a good stretch now. Open up a little bit. This knee here, see where how it is, the angle of the knee? It's right in the small of the back and it allows the hip to come back so you get a really good stretch of uh, psoas attachment. And to ensure that, you want to try to keep the leg as parallel to the mat as you can. And then when you come out, it's nice and easy. Because right? that's a deep stretch, you don't want to come out too fast. And then you use the leg as a lever right back into supine. Then you transition to the other side. Okay? Okay, thank you.